Oh yeah, mi gente, does your dad suffer from uncomfortable, rigid, and plain ugly jeans? Bueno, then this Father's Day, there's hope. Get your dad the perfect jean. They're stretchy, durable, and super suavecito. Available in 13 colors, six fits, and a wide range of sizes. Finding your dad the perfect pair of jeans has never been easier. So this Father's Day, don't get dad the same old, same old. Get him a pair of the perfect jean and use code BIDDLE20 for 20% off your first order at theperfectgene.nyc. Because the only thing dad will love more than a pair of these super comfortable jeans is knowing you saved money buying them. Show dad how much you appreciate him this Father's Day by surprising him with his new favorite pair of jeans, the perfect jean. This is DJ. And this is Ish. And this is season, season six, six of, of Better Let, Let Me Tell You. you. Well, that that can only mean we're back. That we're back in Miami. Back in Miami, yes. back in our studio, <laughs> <laughs> where our our uh, our studio is the tundra. Yes, it is not a sensible seventy four like Eartha Kitt would have enjoyed. <laughs> right, or in your particular case, since you're always half naked, you know that's why. You know, do you want to throw? I have a I'm throw. good. I think I have a throw behind me. I have a complimentary throw. I have. A, oh, it's a complimentary. Well, you know, I don't for, have to pay for, for my guests. Okay, I, I want them to feel at home. So, welcome everybody to episode two fifty one of Pero Let Me Tell You, and yep. we are back in We're Miami. Back we are from back the West home, Coast. Back from the West Coast. How is everyone? Everyody's good. It's How's Friday. Everybody? It's Friday. You know, we haven't done the TGIF jingle in a in a while. We have. It's not. Friday night. And, and the, the mood, mood is, is right. right. We're going to have some fun. Show you how it's done. TGIF. Except most people are probably listening to us in the morning. It's Friday morning. <laughs> There's not a jingle for that. And we're not boring. I don't know. It's Friday morning and we're not boring. Yeah. So in all your glory, get in your car and drive and listen to us and give us a high five. Gonna... Pero let me tell you coming and we're not live. <laughs> Oh yeah, that was pretty good. That was good for on the fly. Yeah, that was that, that was, was not good. bad for on the and fly. And being that, actually, you know what? It's not fake Friday, it's Friday. anymore. It's, it's, it's Friday. Really Friday. So, listeners, when you are listening to this, it's Friday. It's, it's Friday. Not fake Friday anymore. Yeah. We always tell you that we always try to record as soon as po- as close as possible to our drop time, so yep. you get the real deal. Yes, it is. It is so Friday. We might as well be Rebecca Black. Hi. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Poor Rebecca Black. No, poor Rebecca Black. Nah, she has. She's still recording and doing yeah, Pride festivals but, and but stuff. But you know what? You know, for your breakout single to be that, you know, it's kind of she like, rebounded. Is what I'm saying. She's she's doing all did right. Did she? Have you or I been in a video with Katy Perry? Yeah, but that was about it. No, but she has a whole music career in Canada. Still in Canada, not Japan. No, it's in Canada. Oh, does she come out of much music? Probably. Okay. Probably. Okay. Anyway, yeah. we don't. We are back, everybody. So, we I mean, we, we we have to obviously talk about our West Coast recap. Yes, let's let's recap the West Coast. Our West Coast recap. So, three episodes and a couple days. Yeah, it, it was it was jam-packed. The fact that we had time to do anything else. I think I'm well, still a little tired. We really didn't have time to do anything else. We really I mean, didn't. it was really, I mean, it was packed from. Uh, bing, bam, boom, yeah. Yeah, from interviews to meeting different people to going to different places. Like, it, it was it was a hectic few days, yes. but it was well worth We're it. We're efficient that way. So, so anyway, um, you know, we, one of the reasons why we always wanted to do, and, you know, we did previously a whole, but let me tell you, goes west, was because, you know, as you know, here on the podcast, we always talk about, like, you know, the, what it is, I mean, that's our shtick, what it is to kind of be Latin in between two cultures and how we see the world. That's why we talk about current events right. and things like that. And from the guests that we have and, you know, the other influencers, I hate that word, content creators that we have. Content creators. Um, I like that word better. Content creators, that phrase yeah. better. 
But, you know, obviously the the West Coast has its own little, well, not little, its own little th- thing going on, right? It's got that's, a vibe. That it's similar but different. Right. So, we, you know, we wanted to be bi-coastal and, you know, and, and see what the similarities are and what the differences are. Wait, Alka, ahorita DeSantis will cancel us for being bi-coastal. Oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> I'm already canceled as it is. <laughs> <laughs> and he will. All right, let's try to keep it light and this fluffy is true. This in, is in, true. This, this is true. in this episode. In this episode, but um, so you know, we that, that's one of the reasons why we always wanted to go out to the West Coast. And you know, uh, we've said it a hundred times. It was always the goal to do our shows at least once a year in California. And um, this year was just amazing. Yeah. It was, it was such a great time. And you know, we met so many wonderful people. Of course, we met. Our our old favorites, like uh, well, not old, but you know <laughs> that we knew from before, like Familiar favorites. Martha Darby and her family. I finally met my doppelganger. You did meet your doppelganger? Uh, yes. your doppelganger. Yes. Um, and um, you know, it's funny because he's it, one of these people it's that gr- it's great because you look alike, but you don't. But we don't, right? right? Because we're like the same type of guy. If you're not paying too close attention and you're right. scrolling really right. quick, yes. And now his beard is longer than mine. Oh, yeah, that's um, right. But when my beard was longer, yeah. I, yeah. Or when his beard was shorter, because my right. beard has been shorter for a few years now. But, yeah, I mean, her son, it was kind of like, what I, I, I say this story all the time. When I, when I saw, you know, one of the times that you went over there without me, that you took a picture with him, I did like a double take. I'm like, okay, wait, that's not Where me. Where was I? But, but, <laughs> that's not me, but it's me. Like, um, but anyway, we, you know, obviously Martha and her family and um, we also yes, met Lisa a, from, from Alisa, Alisa Candle. Candle. I mean, we, we say this all the time. These people at this point have become like family yeah, to they us. Are. They really um, are. And when we see them in LA, it's kind of like, oh my God, my prima or my tia, I haven't seen in. It really is. And it sounds cliche as hell, but it's so true. Yeah. And they they were just so sweet when we met up with them at Portos because, of course, (laughs) where else? You you have to do uh, (laughs) the pilgrimage, a a trip to Portos. And, um, you know, one of the things that we posted on our site, that we totally loved was Ecochinito. Oh my god, I can't say enough good things about Ecochinito. Ecochinito was freaking awesome. I cannot love it enough. It was it was awesome. The food was incredible. Um the flan was <laughs> oh my god, insane. It melts on insane. Your when, when, it's funny because when I was editing the reel I made for it, there were some scenes I had to cut out because I was so like savoring the flan that I'm yeah. like, I mean, I'm gonna put it on Instagram. I mean, you're about to see. It, it, I had listen. a moment. It's not an only flans page, it's okay? It's not an only flans page. <laughs> okay. Let me tell you something. There could be there there could be but let me tell you something. There could be a market for that because there could be. an only flans page where all I eat is flans. <laughs> I mean, I'm not seeing a downside. I mean, weirder thing. There's weirder the, listen, things. Listen, that is not there. the weirdest thing on the internet. I mean, at I, I, all. I'd, I'd at be, all. I mean, listeners, would you pay <laughs> to for, watch you eat to flung? watch me eat different types of flung? Yeah, but you know the thing is that eventually it'll get weird. Yeah, because people are paying for it. Yeah, eventually they're gonna want to put want to put things on the flung that I'm gonna be like, no. Yeah, <laughs> they're gonna want you to do some like concoctions. Yeah, they're gonna want me to put Nutella on the flan, flung, and then they're gonna want me to do something with the Nutella. And yeah, I'm not, going, I'm not going down that route. <laughs> or make weird noises. Yeah, I'm not going down that route. Yeah. Um, yeah. No. But anyway, it was it was it was so good, and um, we just had a great time meeting new people. We yes. met um, yes. we met Alain Alain yes. Mesa yes. Um, from Call of Duty. He was so so nice. Nice, like so nice and you know it's funny because we even got to hang out with people who we've known you know from before like jenny lorenzo yeah. and, and eddie zamora but in a different context right you know much more relaxed because we've met you know we've, we've interviewed them well for both of them we did our initial interviews virtual right but but then, and also, then we've met them but in the context of an event right and so and, it's, and, it's not the same and when they had been on the show before, they we interviewed them. Correct. This time we co-hosted, Correct. and we we actually, if truth be told, we we actually even prefer the co-hosting because when we co-host with people, it's really laid back. Yeah, and it's just we're shooting the shit, and you know, obviously, Ish and I come prepared for the shows to a certain extent. Uh, but when we have we co-host with someone, it's a little bit more flowy. A little, I feel like it, it lets you see a different side. Of uh, of their personality because yeah. they're not promoting yeah. an event or, yeah. or a thing, you know. They're just like, well, oh, today we're talking about blah blah blah. Yeah, Sweet I loved when we interviewed Jenny. Jenny was on fire. <laughs> Jenny, was... okay, I'm still laughing about her. The whole part about her and the three Yeah, that was that, that was, was my favorite part. But um, you know, one of the things 
I really enjoyed about LA this time was I think this was like my sixth or seventh time in LA. Mm-hmm. I, I was trying to count it. And that doesn't include layovers. <laughs> like, <laughs> you know, I don't Who includes a layover. No, no. I have Some heard people, people do? I have heard people that, you know, they'll tell you, oh, I've been to every state or I've been right. here and I've been there. And it includes layovers. And I'm like, not the, same, no. the airport yeah, does not, not count. count. No. Going no. to Hudson News no. at, <laughs> at LaGuardia uh, or uh, at like, you know, the Atlanta airport. Uh, uh, ja- uh, what is it? Uh, that doesn't that no, doesn't count. Doesn't count. It's um, not. It's not but, we're not there. Um, no. But excluding no. Uh, layovers, this was like my sixth or seventh time in LA, and I I had always said this before. LA to me felt like a whole. It felt like Miami on steroids. Yeah. You know, yeah, Miami yeah. has bad traffic. LA has worse yeah, traffic. Hold my beer. Yeah. <laughs> Miami has like you have to drive everywhere. Right. LA more. Yeah. Um. You know a. <laughs> there is like Latin culture. Here you go. Here you go. Yeah. Um, I've always felt that LA was, yeah, Miami on steroids. But, you know, every time we had gone to LA, you know, obviously you do the touristy stuff. I'm going to go here. I'm going to go there. I'm going to go to Hollywood. I'm gonna... But this time around, we were hanging around with the locals. Yeah. We were just. It's a different agenda. We, we were staying at like different people's houses. Like it, it was different. Mm-hmm. And for me, just my experience, it was very special. Yeah, um, I agree. I had some moments that were just very special, and and I I actually I, I like left LA in love with LA. Like I can't wait to go back. I really did in, in a way that I hadn't. It's not, I want to be very clear. It's not that I didn't enjoy LA before, right? But it was just this time just felt different, and it I, just felt different. It just, I don't it know. Felt, it for just me, did. for me, it definitely felt different, and it was all about the company. Um. It, it was just, it was very special, and I can't wait to go back. I, I can't wait to go back to L.A. Yeah. Um, and and I will, we will. and yeah, That's the goal? Yeah, that, that's the goal. Because, I mean, there's still a lot for me to do and eat. <laughs> 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 I mean, donut culture comes from L.A. This is true. I, I mean, this is the very fact true. that there is a donut shop almost like in every corner of L.A., that is a magical place. It really does. There's donuts everywhere. It like, really does. You happen. get a donut and you get a donut. You get a donut. I, how can you hate on a place that has donuts everywhere? And We're talking the, about donuts, people. And then on donuts. the other corners is tacos. Yes. <laughs> what's not to love? Birria tacos. I mean, what's not to love? Tacos and donuts. I'm yes. in. Yes, and Korean barbecue. Yes, like we, 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 this is a win-win situation. No loss at all. No, 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 no lies detected. And, no loss, and, and the no. weather was like pretty awesome. We got really lucky about the weather because it was like it was chilly, but not like bundle up with a scarf cold. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? So it was like it was that that weird kind of cold where like. Hace frío, pero solo está fuera. Mm-hmm. So you still feel hot at the same time. Mm-hmm. Even though, you know, we had our whole photo shoot with, uh, at the pool. Um, right. Where we were titiriteando because yeah. we're like, but think warm thoughts. It's funny. <laughs> it was because, not easy. Because when I jumped in that pool, um, <laughs> well, I mean, for those who follow me on my personal Instagram, I posted a picture of me in the pool with like a t-shirt, you know, right. a yeah. t-shirt on. And... I know I kind of did it for artsy reasons, but the reality is that the pool was freezing cold. It was cold. freezing. It was freezing cold. It was freezing. You know what? But I don't want to hear it. Yeah. I don't want to hear it because I did it in a Speedo with a hose. But you didn't jump in. Uh, I was outside with I, clothing. I, I told you this. I think that if there's ever in like an example of the difference between you and I, it's the difference it's that, that photo we, shoot. It's a different the photo shoot that we did in the pool. Like I was thinking, like kind of dark, mysterious, like wet t shirt, kind of you know, in the water. You were thinking pool boy, absolutely. You were thinking pool absolutely. boy. I'm gonna live this in my little skimpy little <laughs> underwear. Whereas I'm like, bring on the turtleneck. I'm gonna go in a hoodie in the water. Like, I'm gonna weigh go me to- down. Yes. Yes, I'm going to go in a hoodie in the water and make it, you know, cool and but mysterious. that's what makes us us. That is what makes us us. That's what makes I us I will work. go into a hoodie in a pool and you will go half naked. 
more than half. That, that is why you and I work. That is what makes this work. <laughs> Think about it. If we were both two half naked people I, or two hoodie people, this I, would work. I, the th- what do you use to clean the pool? Um, the the skimmer. The skimmer. I use the skimmer for functionality. You use the skimmer as a prop. Absolutely. Yes, it should be. <laughs> as God intended. <laughs> I use it for its intended reason. You use it to look sexy. <laughs> and that is its intended reason as far as I'm concerned. <laughs> I mean, me holding a fishnet. What? What more do you want? Oh my god! Call it Vanity Fair. This is, this is crazy. <laughs> well, well then. Um, so I will say this though: one of the few tourist things that I did was that I finally went to the Griffith Observatory. Oh, um, and isn't great. And. Um, I, I posted this on my personal Instagram. You know, the Griffin Observatory was built in the 1930s, and it's one of the most uh, historic and, yeah. and important observatories in the United States. And it's iconic and all has all this history around it. Yet, all I could think about was Paul Abdul. That's all that I thought about. I know it happened to you, too, when you visited. Absolutely. Yeah, that's all I could think about. Paul Abdul, rush, Absolutely. rush. You and get out of the car and you rush, rush to the observatory. Yes, yes. And I'm like, all I want from you is what you are. Can you imagine if one day you just show up there and Keanu Reeves is just there? And I love Keanu Reeves. And, you know, I love Keanu Reeves. There's no disrespect to Keanu Reeves. Um, he's in one of my favorite this movies ever, The Matrix. But, you know, I love that. Keanu Reeves has a tendency of being one dimensional. He's he's very very mellow. He's made one dimensionality interesting and right, artistic. right, right. Um, he's and in, cool that, in that video, especially, he's like half dimensional. Like he's not even one dimensional. <laughs> and yet, all I can think about was him and Paul Abdul. Like especially Paul Abdul while I was at the Griffith Observatory. But anyway, the story I want to uh, I want the, the reason I bring this up is because anytime I go anywhere, um, I, I think it's just ingrained in you. Mm-hmm. Anytime you go some, I go anywhere. I, I always think like, who's Cuban? Like who here is Cuban? You, right. Like, the, the radar goes up. Yes. The, the right. Cuban the radar. Cu- cu- Cubadar? Right. The, <laughs> right. You know how like there is like the, the, the gaydar. The gaydar right, the, right, right. Right. No, there the, the Cuban radar is is strong, right? It's it is a thing and it's strong. And no matter where I go, obviously the more like if it's foreign, like you're in Europe right. or something, I'm always like, hmm, I'm at the, the Louvre. I wonder <laughs> Where's the Cuban here? <laughs> I'm in Australia. I understand Cubano. <laughs> like we could figure this out. Well, here I was at the Griffin Observatory, and then you know, um, there, a lot of people visit that place, but it's 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 quiet. Yeah, right? and people go hiking. There. People go hiking, yeah. and they're looking out at the like the scene. You know, so it's quiet. There were a lot of people there, and I'm there, and all of a sudden I hear people, people, and I'm like. Oh no! You found them. <laughs> oh, they yeah. found you. Oh yeah, get pasa, mommy? And I'm like, oh no! And it was like a group of twenty of them. Oh, and I'm no. like, not twenty, but probably like twelve. Okay, it was more than ten, okay. less than twenty. Okay, I'm Cuban. I'm gonna exaggerate. <laughs> and there they were. I'm like, here are the Cubans. We have arrived. We have arrived. And then of course, la gritería, la gritería. No, they were arguing about the battery. Something had run out of battery. <laughs> Something had charged them. No, porque lo dijo que lo tenía que dejar cagando. Y esto siempre pasa. And I'm like, yep. Here's everybody at the Griffith mm. Observatory looking, thinking about Paul Abdul. And, <laughs> and, and we, our people, came to be the loudest and arguing about the battery. And I'm like, well, here we are. Here was, and that, was we like, do. that was like towards the end of, of the trip. Uh-huh. And I was like, well, it took me a week, but I found the Cubans in LA. Well, okay, a Cuban's never going to be on time. Right. Exactly. Never exactly. going to be on time. I had, so, found, yes. I had found other Cubans in LA. Right, 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 right. right. Um, but this was, you know, a, this a is a special. special type of they were Cuban. in the wild. Y- yes, Cubans in the wild. Cubans. <laughs> uh, so I'm like, well, you know, this is a nice topper to it's nice to. This was like the nice, you know, capper capper to to capper topper um, to the our uh, LA trip. So yeah. yeah, Cubans at the Griffith Observatory. Cuban. They were not thinking of Paul Abdul. I could assure you that. You don't know that. No, yeah, of course they weren't. It depends on the age. No, they weren't. They were thinking of. La Diosa. <laughs> La Diosa de Cuba. Imagínate Which, if you don't know who La Diosa de Cuba is, look up on Instagram. Yeah, La Diosa I, I, de Cuba. I, actually, I mean, we'll save, we'll save a conversation about her for another episode. So, <laughs> so yeah, um, LA was incredible. LA was pretty magical. So It was. It was. And I, I don't use that word often because I kind of 
scoff at people when they use yeah. that word because <laughs> I feel like that's one of those words that just gets used yeah. very often nowadays for no reason. But uh, yeah, no, it really was. And there was a day uh, I uh, I went to like a, a beachfront area and that was incredible. It was a perfect, 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 beautiful day. Mm-hmm. So um, great place, great company. Yes. Everything was amazing. So anyway, um, so we'll be back. And uh, well, we we'll be back to LA, and yes, we will yes. be back after <laughs> this message. this message, and we will be joined by our co-host for the rest of the uh, episode, uh, Tony X Travels, who is quite the Instagram star. That that Tony, yes, and really freaking entertaining. Uh, a little bit. I mean, I haven't <laughs> known him for a, a minute, so we'll be back. <laughs> Oye mi gente, ish here. Let's face it, sometimes we need a little energy boost to focus during the day, but I want to avoid those energy drinks with who knows what in them. Bueno, let's talk about the sponsor of today's podcast, NeuroGum and Mints. Developed by former athletes who don't want to take supplements or energy drinks when they're studying, training, or going out, these gum and mints were endlessly lab tested with thoughtfully curated natural ingredients to create three different products. There's Calm and Clarity with vitamin D3 to optimize clarity of mind, or Health and Vitality, which is infused with immune-boosting vitamins to help strengthen your body. Now, y'all know I have a full-time job, co-host, and produce this podcast, not to mention help run wing pop-ups. So I am all about the energy and focus mints right now. And let me tell you, I am definitely feeling those B vitamins pushing my mental endurance so I can focus on everything I need to get done each week. So it's better than calm, focus, energy, and vitality? Getting them at a discount? Visit Try neurogum.com slash pero to get up to 20% off your purchase of neurogum or mints. That's right. Head to try neurogum.com slash pero and get up to 20% off your purchase today so you can have a little more focus and energy tomorrow. And we're back. Just and in as many weeks, you've done the and we're back. And we're, it had been a while. It had been, it had a, been while. a while. Yeah. So as we said, co-hosting with us uh, the second half of today's episode is uh, one of our favorite Instagrammers and a friend, uh, Mr. Tony X Travels. So yes, welcome. 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 You're also, going to be, I, a, I, be I, a co-host. I, I just learned the whole Tony thing, by the way. Yep, so did I a couple months yeah, ago. Because I, <laughs> yeah, because <laughs> I... Well, I mean, I've known you for over 10 years, so imagine how I feel. Like, you know, all of a sudden you're Tony. Like, I know him as Jonathan. I was going to say, you, I, know. you introduced me to him as Jonathan, and I'm like, now it's like, oh, no, Tony. I'm like, who's right. Tony? But where, over half a million up? people follow him on Instagram, right. and they know him as Tony. So there's more people that know him as Tony that know him by Jonathan. I mean, that's true. Yeah. That's absolutely, yeah. Well, yeah. I mean, I don't know how many people he knows in person. Well, I mean, I don't know if he knows half a million people. In He's a very popular no. guy. Yeah. Yeah. So anyway, so he's going to be hanging out with us in this half of the episode. Yes. And we're we're going to talk um, <laughs> a lot about a lot of things. And, uh, what is it? Uh, everything? And anything, nothing, everything and, and absolutely nothing. Ones. But um, anyway, so when well, no, Jonathan or well, Tony, um, it's going to get very confusing very fast. So. So welcome to Pero Let Me Tell You. And, um, you know, one of the things that we we talked about and one of the reasons I wanted to have you on the show is because you are a Miami native, you know, born and raised in Miami, pero ahora estás viviendo en Colombia. Oh, so, he's an expat. Yes. So greetings to our Colombian friends and Colombian Pero Primos. So oh, wait, actually, are you an expat? Like what 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 constitutes an, an expat? Isn't the military involved? No. <laughs> well, not in the military. <laughs> Everything but... <laughs> It is a fantasy of mine, but it, I was gonna say, but enough about your personal life. Um, <laughs> but no, but isn't it? Because I feel like there's paperwork involved to become an expatriate, isn't there? I mean, yeah, I guess what, three people who don't know, who don't know. But I pose the question, and I have no clue. Three people who have college and graduate degrees and don't really know. But we've well, you and I have never lived outside the country. We so haven't. we would know. We would have no reason to know, right? Well, I mean, we do live in Miami, in Miami Dade County, which is kind of like another country. That's true, because as we stated earlier, Miami is not Florida. It's not Florida. It's its right. own thing, right. right? Right. The Constitution is a little bit different here. It's but it, then it's it, in Spanglish. But then yes, but then again, you know, the Constitution and Florida is something that is that issue right now. Oh, it's now. in flux. But, but we don't want to throw up at the minute. So <laughs> anyway, oh yeah. So so you've been living in in Colombia for yeah. whereabouts uh, in Colombia? A minute. No. Barranquilla. Barranquilla. I mean, I also live in Cucuta. Yeah. Oh, okay. no one well, no, but I mean, but it makes sense because in Barraquilla te queda. Te vas a quedar. Literally. I right, mean, right. Y te quedaste. Right. right. So how, how, you know, because so many times we talk about people like 
moving from one state to another and you know the difference and all that how has it been like oh yeah leaving the country and and moving that's to totally different I mean, it's great. I'm, I live illegally there because I'm an illegal, <gasps> technically still. So you were talking about like expat and stuff, but I'm not like I don't have papers yet. So it's like, yeah. so has so has the president or, or the or the mayor put you like on a bus to go to the Martha's Vineyard equivalent? No, because I pay in dollars, so oh, I'm okay. good. Okay. I'm good for now. Okay. So so la migra no ha venido a, a <laughs> no. So the thing is that you, as a U.S. citizen, you could be there. You could like. When you travel places, you can travel there for six months. You can drive there. You can do everything legally there. Okay. But for technically, six months. yeah. But you technically don't have like any like legal documents yet. You know, like like renting a house, buying a house is, is all. You're a like process. an extended tourist. Correct. And I, I purchased a home. It was a little different. Like it was really rough because I mean everyone's like, oh, where's your like ciudadanía? And I was like, oh yeah, I don't have one of those. I was like, Does someone <laughs> want to marry me? I know it's the other way around, but I'm like, I need papers, people, because the taxes in Colombia, by the way, are super high. It's like twenty percent. Really? Yeah. Like federal tax. Yeah. Or like commercial tax i mean both oh wow both yeah like i think the federal tax is like more than 20 percent. like i mean and like the when you purchase something it's like 19 percent. damn well I, I will say i know somebody who works at discovery networks if you want to do the whole 90 day fiance the other way thing i'm already doing it just for free okay. like if you can find me a sponsor but <laughs> no that's what i'm saying i can get you exposure i like, mean yeah, i need yeah, it yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. 90 day fiance yeah. for sale here but let me tell yes. you yes i'm doing it for free so i might as well it's a joke people it's a joke something i don't want to get the dm later it's a joke it's a joke <laughs> But bueno, but tell us because you know we ha we have a lot of uh, people listening us to listening to us que son colombiano. Tell us like what are the things that like you love about Colombia that you've been like either pleasantly surprised or maybe somebody who is not Colombian and hasn't visited Colombia don't know. Just simplicity, like everything in Colombia is simple. In what sense? Not in the legal sense. Everything. <laughs> <laughs> Well, so not everything sense. okay not so not everything. everything right everything legally is is complicated it's kind of like going to the dmv just everywhere like you go buy not oh. a and it's like the dmv well you told me the whole thing about getting a notary that here in like florida no you want a notary boom like no i mean it's asked. a stamp in colombia okay. they they take your fingerprint they print out some little thing like th this little thing with your picture which they take and then you have to sign and then it goes to like another person who authorizes like your identity I was like, I didn't even know who I was until I came to this notary, and now they know who I am. Because here you just stamp something, boom, that's it. Like, over there, it's like 50 pages, and you scan this and that, and it's like holograms. And I was like, this is... But also, it's Colombia. It's that, you know, there's so much fraud over there. Well, so... but we live in Miami. There's fraud here, <laughs> too, and we don't do that shit. <laughs> 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 Which is what I thought. I'm like, man, if they do this in Florida, we're screwed. Yeah. <laughs> Fair enough. <laughs> I mean, yeah. Eh, pero anyway, but tell us a little bit about like your 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 experience. Yeah, like how... For me, it was like life-changing in the sense that Colombia is simple. So for example, when I say simplicity, is something as simple as people can get together on weekends with their family. Like, you know, I do a lot of walking. I walk anywhere from like eh, 10 to 12 miles at least three, four times a day. I mean, a day, no, like um, wow. a week. Yeah, I was like, I'm not that healthy. Eh, one of the crazy things about that though is that I walk by a lot of houses and you see like people who are like celebrating with their kids and celebrating with their family. And like for me, like, I, I mean, I, I've cried looking at these people. I'm like, man, like I can't do that with my family. You know, I, I just to get, you know, in the same room with my mom, it's a pain. So imagine over there, like these people really take that into consideration. Their holidays are sacred to them. Like family is everything. Well, that's Latin America. Like Latin America, yeah. like I'm just going to use the example of like the Christmas holidays. Like I remember when I used to work with Latin America agencies, whatever. From like December 1st to December 31st, it was the exception to the rule was when they were in the office because they were just always out. Like it was like, nope, es el día del santo de no sé quién, en ese día no se trabaja, and don't even bother. So, yeah, I think that we should get more saints in the US, is basically what I'm saying. <laughs> but that's that's really interesting because I think that that's something that here in like in the United States, you know, it's such a, you know, this is not, I'm not shading capitalism, but, you know, because it is such a capitalist driven culture. You better not. We have a chicken business. <laughs> um, you know, everything is about making money, which is fine. Um, but more and more, like we talk about, like, for example, on Thanksgiving, you know, Thanksgiving was such a like sacred holiday that nobody worked on Thanksgiving. And now more and more you see things open right. on Thanksgiving for black um well, no, they've scaled back on that. They have, they, they have, have, they have. But there's still a lot of things that are open on Thanksgiving. There are a lot of things, that but are they scaled back on that because of the coronavirus. Because of co yeah, because of COVID, yeah. They they did it to save money. It's it's right. almost like yeah, it's, yeah. right. It wasn't for the right the benefit reasons. of the right, right, right the employees. Reasons. Yeah. So uh, th that's probably a little bit of a culture shock. Yeah, I mean, over there, it's there. Now I will say, 
Colombians are, at least I haven't lived in other countries, but Colombians are the most, eh, se dicen emprendedores. They're like business people, entrepreneurs. Like these people I can sit down and have a conversation with and all of a sudden we're, we're, we're talking about, you know, culture and, you know, randomly we're like, why don't we open X business? Like it's very easy for them to randomly just start being like, we can sell f mango frappes. I was gonna say. Can I mean, we? it's 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 called mango frapping. It's like it's. Amazing. Oh, that sounds dirty. Uh -huh. <laughs> mango frapping. <laughs> ma mango frapping does not. A, ma a mango frappe are two different things. Yeah. I don't know how or why, but they are. They are. <laughs> I mean, they say everything a little bit weird. Like sometimes they say things, and like they'll say it in English. Like I mean, to to come back to all my names that I have, like my my screen name, like Lagui, like is LA guy, and they call me Lagui. Like mango frapping, like everything over there is like weird. Like they pronounce their enunciation is different because they they pronounce it in Spanish. Like, well, don't Colombians speak allegedly the most pure form of Spanish? I don't know if it's the most pure, but I can definitely tell you that they're very uh, they're very happy about their Spanish. Right. Yeah. I, I, yeah, but I've heard that a lot. Yeah. Yeah. That it's like they take pride at like they speak yeah. like a very. Yeah. A lot of people think Colombian is like the nicest yes, sounding it's Spanish. Like the threshold yeah. of like Spanish, not what we speak. What no. we speak is like it's barely Spanish. <laughs> well, it's, it, I mean, when and when someone speaks to you in, like in colombiano, it's como muy bonito, es diferente. It's you know. That's that's the thing. Yeah. Yeah. It's it's very different from like Yanis Lady saying like, "Oye niño, tú sabes qué estamos haciendo." Like they're, they're like they just make it sound beautiful, like. It, they're just very like uh, what is this called like homey like when they they're very they invite you to their house they're very like you know you know now that you said that a little segue so yesterday when I took Tristan over you know to to the center um a I he he walked you know he walked away and I could hear that one of the one of the ladies you know this was at a this was at a facility that, that I took Tristan yesterday I could hear that one of the ladies was like tú te llamas Tristan and he's like, she's like, see, and then I hear her tell somebody else, I can hombre tan americano. And I'm here thinking like, well, I'm sorry that he's not called Usnavi, you know? <laughs> you know, his middle name could be Uniel if you like. Yeah, <laughs> like, or Junior, yeah. you know, but it was such a like, I can hombre más americano. And I'm like, well, you know. Well, you know, we are in the United States. <laughs> <laughs> sorry, it doesn't start with a Y. <laughs> you know, I, I realize that Hialeah doesn't seem like it, but it is. <laughs> Everyone pronounces, and things here, I mean, for all intents and purposes, like in Miami, I mean, Yonada. Yeah. Like Yonata. Yeah. Y O N A T A. Yonata. Yonata. Like my godmother, she won't even give me the Yonata. She's like, Yona. Yona. Yona, that's it. Okay. Well, that's close enough <laughs> for her, I guess. You know, I'm like, at this point, she just she just waves at me. She doesn't even. <laughs> <laughs> so, so you feel like a little bit more like relaxed over there, even though you're busy, like a little bit more. I'm so I'm the pace of life. The pace of life. So, look, I. I wake up, let's say seven in the morning. By that time, I've already gone to El Centro because I'm the, doing the clothing brand thing. I've spoken to distributors. I've spoken to this. I've spoken to that. I've done everything. And then I'm like, I'm, I was like, well, what do I have left to do? It's 1130 in the morning. Right. Oh, he's the anti you. No. Yeah. But it, <laughs> it's not because I'm doing anything extra. It's just the time difference. Oh, no, no. He's just not a morning person. No. That's why, so <laughs> that's neither, why I say he's the anti you. Neither am I. I mean, I'm only awake at that time because I have crazy anxiety and I just haven't slept, but it, it's like you get there and you're like, you can do so much in three hours that here it would take you, you know, just driving 45 minutes. Yeah, that's true. And over there, I walk everywhere. And it's crazy because it's that Minasol, central. Everything. It's very central. now. When Comparatively you, speaking com yeah. to, to, to Miami. I mean, yeah, it's it's. It, well, that's not a high threshold to have. No, that's you know, true. That's but if he, pedestrian friendly. Well, yeah, but if he was from L.A., he wouldn't say that. So. Well, you know. <laughs> well, Columbus I mean, and he, and he is, you know, L.A. guy. La Gui. I'm La Gui. So, yeah. La Gui. Yeah, so it's, it's, but over there, like, I, it's, the, the, everything is different. I mean, also, for example, Florida is very flat. Like, if you make a wrong turn, you're not getting out of Florida. No. <laughs> you have to eight hours to get out of here. Yeah. So, for example, like, over there, like, you know, you make a wrong turn, at least, you know, in some parts of the country. Like, I live 10 minutes from Venezuela. I mean, I almost got deported. Oh, um, <laughs> because I got lost. <laughs> These are the stories of him that I love. This is great. like I could imagine getting a phone call from him and being like, "Oh yeah, I got deported to Venezuela." <laughs> like, okay, I'm there. <laughs> like, I don't know what I could do, but I'm you know. <laughs> this is why you will be invited back. Um, just so we're clear. <laughs> if I'm not being held captive somewhere, but yeah, my use your I, one phone call on us, and we'll <laughs> we'll record it. Do they have one call like one phone call in Venezuela? Oh, I don't know how work? that works. I assume everywhere lets well, you. Well, Venezuela's like socialist slash communist, so they probably don't. They probably don't. I have a nine dollar yeah. phone.
so something something that I'm always curious about, and you know, I, I had asked you, but but every time I I, I speak to somebody, you know, that lives or, uh, internationally or is from another country, I always like to ask them, what are people's takes about like the United States? Like, what do they think about? Americans about the United States about our current political climate because it's just so I feel now especially with social media that it's in your face so much if you choose to read upon that it's available um and there's been so much I mean there's always obviously coverage about the American political system but I feel that now in the last five or six years uh Trump years you know and post Trump years it's been like really on it like what what is your take on us on on the United States on American. So I'll tell you the first thing that I get asked whenever I meet someone. Uh, they're very afraid that I'm going to kill them and stuff them in a suitcase. Okay. I don't think that's because you're American. I think that just might be on you. Nope. Like, like, I don't know. Because nobody's ever asked us I've, that question. I, I literally travel with the smallest bag ever now. So then I'm like, you don't fit in this bag. Okay? Because it, what happened is that there was a lot of Americans that went to Colombia not a lot. I mean, it was like one guy. But you know, it's like when my mom read all, like when I went to Colombia, she gave me every newspaper article from here to like 1998 of all the Americans that got like okay. murdered. Okay. So Colombians do the same thing. So for example, there was one guy that he uh, was dating some a, like really famous uh, DJ mm -hmm. and they got in some kind of fight and he like threw her off like the building and like she oh, no. passed away. So every single time that I meet someone and they're like, oh, el gringo, because they call me gringo, which is the weirdest thing because I don't identify as gringo. That's so bizarre. Yeah. Very weird. And they're like, oh, un gringo. And they're like, oh, pero tú no me vas a matar. No, I'm like, I'm so over this joke. I was like, I'm not going to kill you. And this was over one, one person? person? One person. Wow. Talk about PR. Man. Yeah. I was like, so every time it's like, I get the joke. I'm like, they're like, oh, you're un gringo. And I'm like, yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm going gonna to kill you. Blah, blah. Like, I'm la like. La gui es gringo. <laughs> well, that's why he's la gui. That's true. La Gui, in all fairness, does kind of sound like a serial killer. Okay, so like you have a so book about that you. you're gonna kill. So, us so should I change the name of my brand? It should not be. <laughs> so, so what else? Like, what else do you hear about like Americans? They don't talk a lot about Americans in this. I mean, they think we're bloated. They think like all of us have like so much money. They're like, you guys make so much money. That's a stereotype I like. Uh, yeah. Well, <laughs> until I'm like, well, most of us are on food stamps. You right. know, like. You know, so it's like, it, it's Florida is like one of those, especially like Latinos, because other Floridian, like Floridians or like Latinos that reach out to people in Colombia, mm -hmm. they have like their expensive cars, like they have like all of their really expensive purses and stuff. You know, a bag can cost a thousand dollars and a thousand dollars in Colombia is money. Yep. So unfortunately, like they do have that thought of us that it's like we make money, but they don't understand that most of us who work, I mean, we make enough money to survive because we but we don't have enough money to just, you know, throw away. So that's something that they... They don't know that efficiency in Hialeah costs hoy en día like $1,200. But, it, but, but, actually, están comiendo un cable. but it's funny you bring that up because I was actually going to ask, like, is... Again, I don't, I don't necessarily know the, the people that you know in Colombia, but one of the things that we always talk about is how, like, you know, Cubans, they come from Cuba, they're here for, like, a year or whatever. Again, they live in, like, the worst place, but they have, like, all the gold chains and everything. So when they go back to Cuba, se lucen, Right. Do you find that also happens with Colombians or or is because maybe that's where they're getting that impression, right? Of of coño, todo mundo que regresa viene cagado. They do and what one one thing that I love about Colombians is they're very family oriented. I think that's one of the things that really like made me fall in love with Colombia mm -hmm. is the fact that for example, they do go back, but they don't have expensive things. What do they do? They go back to help their mom build a house or okay. they they help them buy una moto, you know, because they don't have a lot of money for those things. Right, right. So Cubans, they go back to be like, hey, this is what I have. I mean, my opinion, you know, but... Historically speaking. Yeah, usually that's what you see um, because Cubans don't want to go back to Cuba. They can't go back to Cuba, but the difference with Colombia is that you can go back and that you can get U.S. dollars and build a home there and live okay. there. And it's such a beautiful country that people want to take money back to do that. So generally, the people that I see over there, that's what they're, they're coming here. They're living miserable lives, work, living in, you know, apartments with seven people to be able to give their family a second chance in Colombia. And I think that that's one of the things that for me is impressive about the Colombian culture, which is Colombians are just very about what are we going to do to survive? Mm -hmm. And they're not like, now I'm in the States and I can live better. Right. No, they're like, I'm going to live in my country because I love my country. Right. Like Colombians okay. love their country. And I think that's like, I have a friend over there. They're like, you should be the ambassador for Colombia mm -hmm. because 
it's I, I just I love it and I think they're yeah, but then you'd have to go to the notary and that sounds like a hassle <laughs> it's funny because that reminded me of this meme that went around it went viral some years ago of Jennifer Lopez that it said eh, trabajando en los Estados Unidos and it was a screenshot of her made in Manhattan oh and yes, then yes, it, yes, yes and yes. then the other picture was cuando regresa a, a tu, tu país. país and then she was her like in a premiere all glammed out and I'm like you know there's some truth to that there's there some is truth, truth to that, that. Yeah, yeah you know what you know what I think is so funny about you know us Cubans is that you know we <laughs> We think we're better than everybody else. I love when Cubans are, you know, when you're talking about, you just said now about Colombian pride. I, I love when some Cubans are like, ay, a mí no me caen bien los colombianos porque los colombianos son tan orgullosos. Se creen que son los mejores. I'm like, really? Yeah, obviously I'm that's like, also Argentinians. I'm like, um, really, really? <laughs> that's not really? Colombians. Because we think the world revolves around us. Like, <laughs> I mean, it does. We're it faster, is, smarter, better. You know, it like. is the world's smallest sun. <laughs> Cuba, the entire <laughs> island is just a big old solar system. Yeah. But um, well, speaking speaking of you know of, of national pride, um, I want to switch topics a little bit. So um, you know, Brazilians also have a lot of pride in, in in their national you know where they come from and what they are. But I'm thinking that that's probably and they make an exception for George Santos, who was recently arrested on uh, charges of fraud, money laundering, and all of that wonderful stuff. And uh, I just gotta say. Did this all happen when we were in L.A.? It did happen when we were in L.A. <laughs> you know that when we were in L.A., I did not watch the news at all. Really? I didn't because know. Because I just saw your face completely change of, like, totally new news. Yeah, yeah. Like, like, like it was the first this time is, you were listening. This is the bliss we had when we were in L.A. It is. You know? Take um, me back to Pasadena. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> anyway, um, so he got arrested for what? So well, I mean, this is not surprising. He was arrested on charges of fraud money laundering, theft of public funds, and false statements. It was a 13-count indictment that was actually uh, unsealed uh, the week of whenever May 10th approximately was. Um, and he was going to be arraigned in Long Island um, like that same week. And so he's basically uh, looking down the barrel of not-so-good things. Not that that means anything. I mean, he'll that, probably run again of, and win. That was kind of my question because he, he has said that he's like, he's like, well, I'm not going to resign. No, he's not going to resign. He's still here. And and I was just kind of putting it on, on you guys. You know, what do you think it means? Like, does it even mean anything to be? It's almost like a badge of honor at this point, isn't it? No, it doesn't mean anymore because people don't vote anymore for integrity. They vote just to stick it to the other person. So the fact that he could, um, he got arrested for all this stuff. It doesn't, it, it doesn't really matter. And... You know who was the people who are going to vote for him are going to vote for him. But um, what did they? I, I, I still have that question of like, what the hell did they vote for in the first place? Because he came out of nowhere. It's not like this is somebody who had you know public service record and things like that. I mean, well, maybe he did because he made it up. But I, I like who does their due diligence? Like most people just look at the name like and like vote like. It's a like Yeah, yeah. Well, well, <laughs> right, I mean, but, I think but who, right. But we're talking about somebody who ran with the Republicans with the last name Santos. I would think that prompts some degree of due diligence. No, I, I agree with what he said. People nowadays, there there is very, very little critical thinking anymore in casting a ballot and picking who you're going to vote for. It's party lines. It, it's Right now, it's party lines. Because right now, you know, it's tribal. People are like, I don't care how bad my guy is. I don't care how despicable he is. I just don't is. want you to win. I just want to stick it to the other guy, right? And in his particular case, he... It does. This doesn't really matter. He's gonna run again. I mean, maybe he won't win. Uh, but I, the people that support him or did support him are most probably gonna support him again. I mean, yes, there were. I'm sure there were a certain amount of people that um, that voted for him and supported him. That when all of this came out of him just being right, we're like, whoa, <laughs> yeah. But I mean, yeah. I think the best thing that has come out of this was the whole drag thing. Yeah. Well, maybe his legal defense is actually going to be the ACLU Drag Defense Fund. Well, no, but but that you know, show I don't, I don't get his I don't, money from RuPaul. I don't I don't know with what drag queen because I don't know drag queens, but the drag queen that did a, a whole show. Oh, I think that, that was Meatball. That she came out dressed like him in his little suit with like his little yep. sweater with the total tie, transformation, and then she started taking everything off, and under was like the dress of like the drag. Uh, yeah, the, 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 the that went viral. Of him. That's pretty odd. Did you see that? No, honestly, like I've lived in Colombia for six months. So when you said George Santos, I just Googled, I just Googled him while you were talking, and I just found out who he was. So ah, tú no sabes lo que está pasando. Ah, no, 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 no
Yeah. So you have no clue that about all of this wonderful, like, no, that he look, was apparently what, a drag queen in Brazil. No. Yes. But I did hear about, he had, like, a boyfriend that had, like, an, that, like reported him or something like that. Okay. Well, we're not sure if he's even gay. Like, he, it, 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 you're right. I did hear I about mean, I him. only know of one straight guy who does drag. Well, but 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 the thing is that so, at this point, his sexuality is, like, the least of, of it. it. Yeah. So he, he ran and he won. Yeah. And then everything about his resume, everything about his resume it's and false. his... And his biography was untrue. Now, we're not talking about embellishment, embellishment right. or a little exaggeration. You know, we're talking about like completely made up. So he said that he was Jewish and he's not Jewish. You know what he meant by? He goes, oh, I'm Jewish. Like, like I'm a little ish. Like la tatarabuela de la no I mean, sé qué, de by la that, vecina. By, by those parameters, so am I. Right. Right. Because he probably took a 23 and me and he was like <laughs> 0.0001 Jewish. So it's like, oh, I'm Jewish. I'm Ashkenazi. <laughs> As everyone is. As everyone, As everyone is. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. And anyway, and um, he said that he worked for like Citigroup and like another major financial institution. That was a total lie. He said he graduated from, from like two different universities. It's not even that he didn't graduate. He didn't even go to college. Um, oh, his pa- his parents died in 9-11. Oh, he said that his parents died in, or his mom died they in 9-11. Not. But his mom died twice because then in Twitter, <laughs> he said that she died in 9-11. But then some years back, I think when she really did die, he like tweeted about it. So his mom died twice. Um, and it's just, it's old, like, it's insane. It, it, it's and again, built on built. And it yeah. wasn't even that he lied about one thing. Like, let's say that he lied about his educational credentials. Fine. Right? Right. That's something that, you know, people lie about uh, a lot of times. No, this is, like, completely fabricated. It's pathological. Like, but yeah, he ended up. But he, he won. won. He won. Well, I mean, but the district, I mean, what was, it, was, it was a district in New York, I think it was. In Long Island. In Long Island. It was a smaller district, right? Um, right, but. Re- but still, he still won. I mean. Regardless. Yeah, right, right. But even after that, you know, there was people within his party that supported him. Uh, because they didn't want to lose the numbers. Right, they didn't want to lose the number. And it's like, okay, you know, but, you know. Well. I mean, I just, I can't wait to see that he says that now he's a lawyer. I think he said I'm that sure. he, maybe he, if he says that he's going to be like, they do like an AI version of him, like you guys were talking about last week. Right. If they do an AI version of him, that, I mean... He could continue in politics without having to The problem with be, an AI you know, version of him is that it can't be any more fake than his resume exactly. right now. <laughs> I, have to, I have to talk to you. Let me tell you something about this AI version thing that we've talked about a few times on this show. Okay. I heard Genie on the bottle in a bottle by Britney Spears. Oh, yeah. And it was pretty awesome. <laughs> oh, no. Britney now has an entire AI catalog, by oh, the way. She does? Oh, yeah. Is, well, is I she think... a hologram? Because I mean, <laughs> is... listen, you put some respect on that hologram, all right? <laughs> I told you this the other day. I'm I'm actually just gonna put it out there, but we're saying it publicly first, so we're, mm. we own that domain. Oh Lord! I think that somebody who does AI should do Mariah Carey singing Jennifer Lopez songs and Jennifer Lopez singing Mariah Carey songs, and the series is called "They Don't Know Each Other." <gasps> just putting it out there. I love it. Well, as I told you, I think it's what is it? Which one? It's easier. I think it's. It'll be harder to hear Mariah singing Jennifer J-Lo right. than J Lo singing Mariah. Mariah. Because I could just can you imagine Mariah's voice being Yayeni Yego? Presente. Let's get this. I don't even I, know how Why it would did sound. she become totally Latina I, I there? I don't even like, know how it would like, sound. Like for a minute there, your Mariah became Maria Care. Like, be like, <laughs> Let's get low. Like, Actually, register. we'd hear the note properly. <laughs> In all fairness, uh, in all kind of deference, awesome. and you know, I am a I am a J Lo fan. I saw her in Vegas. I've seen her many times. <laughs> no, this is no hate towards J Lo, but you it's know, just but... everybody's vocal ability is what it is. I mean, I do, can't sing either one of them. You so. do what you can with what you got, exactly. You know, but whatever. Oh yeah, the Heat are in the, the Heat is in, they're in the playoffs officially. Yeah, they're so, in the Eastern Eastern coño. Conference um, playoffs, and they beat uh, they beat Boston. As of the time of this recording, yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> fake they, Friday, they, fake Friday. They, they. Oh, by the way, it's fake Friday. It's fake Friday. It's fake Friday. It's fake Friday. It's yeah. fake Friday. Um, they are, and it's funny because it's we time it's, travel here. It's sort of keen. They came out from behind, and um, nobody thought that they would. They were very close far. to not making it. No, that, but that's what I'm saying. They came. No, no, back but, from even, behind. but even even in the semifinals, throughout the season, nobody ever thought they were going to get to the postseason. You're in Colombia. I have no idea what you're talking about. <laughs> the heat. Should we just bring up Shakira? I don't know. Like what? what? Okay, is Shakira like the national treasure? Shakira's had a great or, year. Or is it Juan is? Shakira, I mean, I will say that you hear the song everywhere. Ooh. It's a little annoying. <laughs> well, I mean, Shakira's a big deal. Yeah. I mean. Her hips don't lie. Yeah. Unlike George Santos's. <laughs> but... <laughs> 
<laughs> his hips and his lips and everything. <laughs> everything else. <laughs> um, but yeah, I mean, they're they're um, they don't listen to any English music. It's very weird. I mean, really. Yeah, I, I mean, mean when like, you have Shakira, I mean, right? But I would think like, so but I would think people. like a Beyonce. And oh, Karol G or, is very popular over there. Yeah. Like they're like they're, La Bichota. La, La Bichota. Bichota, perdón. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I was like, she chesty. Like, yeah. <laughs> what did he say? La Bichota. He said, I, La I, Bichota. I, well, I heard Bichota. No, oh, Bichota. Like, <laughs> Bichota. No, that's because I was thinking how it was spelled. Uh huh. Yeah, she's the but it's all like they're very and they they listen to something called Bayanato. Oh, that's like that's like ballads, kind of, right? No, I have no idea what it is. But every every time I get into a, oh, like a taxi with a Colombian, they try to explain it to me. But I'm not really interested in it because I'm like, I mean, I don't know. It's nice music, but it's weird. It's like you know, what I'm cool. freaking into. I, I have been, I have been is I love Maluma, Maluma baby. I mean, I was into Maluma until it, uh, what's her name, uh, Madonna licked his toes. That that killed it for me. Did you see that video of her sucking his toe? I can't say I did. I mean, we've only seen when she did it to Naomi Campbell. <laughs> I can't say I did. Well, I mean, <laughs> we're old school that, that way. I was like, you know what? No, no, thank you. <laughs> so wait, so Madonna sucking Maluma's toes wait. ruined Maluma for yeah, you? I want to unpack. I, mean, Maluma, I want to unpack Maluma's this. Fault. I want to unpack this. Is it because you don't like when people suck toes? Is it because you don't like when old women suck toes? Like, is it, you don't like when Madonna sucks toes? I don't. I want to unpack all of this. What was the... Okay, we don't need to get into details on Pedro. <laughs> let me tell you about sucking toes. This is not no, that type of no, podcast. No, no, no. But I'm asking about in specific, what was it about that moment like that just was weird? Like... I don't know. Maybe I was jealous. I have no idea. But it okay, was just, okay. I, it was just didn't do it for me. I was okay. like, I, it was like, I don't know. Okay. For, so okay, so they they don't listen to English. I love that when you said they don't listen to English music, you were like they don't listen to Beyonce. Like well, Beyonce is like <laughs> because I feel like that's the barometer of like you know English music. English American music, American, yeah. No, they do. You know who they listen to? They listen to um, Rihanna. They okay. really like Rihanna. That's because she's from Barbados. Yeah, because they're Caribbean. It's Caribbean. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, they listen to they listen to her. Um, they don't understand. Like it's crazy because their enunciation is very good. So they'll like sing a whole song to you, and I'm like, do you know what it's about? They're like, no. So they'll be like, bon de replay. <laughs> yeah, or like Adele, because like you know, I like I'm always singing Adele, and they're like, I love that song, and they'll sing it to you in like perfect English. And then I'm like, I love the meaning behind it. And they're like, what is she talking about? <laughs> okay, but in all fairness, I guarantee you that half of the girls in Arkansas have no idea what Bad Bunny's saying. That's true too. Yeah, mm-hmm. <laughs> I mean, I don't know what Bad Bunny's saying half the time. Yeah, I mean, who does? Yeah. I mean, Bad Bunny's always. I, I don't think Kendall Jenner knows <laughs> Bad Bunny. <laughs> they just, they speak love language. They don't yeah. have to. They don't have to understand rap. Yeah, but um, but it's it, it's interesting because you know Colombia is one of those countries um that has like such had has had such a big impact, especially on pop culture in the United States. So like, I wonder like you know I'm glad you said that like the other way around because you know we always talk about like American pop culture having such an influence around the world. And, you know, you're saying that they don't really listen to American music. I'm sure Michael Jackson was still around. That would be the exception. It always is. Yeah, it's always Michael Jackson. It's always Michael Jackson. But when, speaking of music, mm-hmm. and, and the fact, I love that he's been in like a news cocoon for the last couple of weeks, which is wonderful, because I, I feel like I'm, I'm, I'm just like laying things which on generally him. I'm like, you know, super. He's, yeah, he's on top of it all. And like, but, and also you've been in Colombia, so I feel like this is going to be oh, new this is for perfect, you too. I had no idea what was going on. So have either of you heard about the fact that, because we're talking about music, um, Paramount Media Networks has slashed the U.S. workforce, and as a result of that, they have shut down MTV News. My first question is, MTV News was still around? <laughs> this, is, this is coming from somebody who grew up, you know, on the worshipping With Kurt, Kurt Loder and Tabitha Soren. And, and, Tabitha yeah. Soren yeah. and uh, yeah. you know, all of them. So I know you're a little bit younger than us, but did MTV News have any type of impact on your MTV consumption growing up? Because clearly it did for us. I think MTV News and like MTV Music, I remember there was like, they had like shows that they would come on. So, yeah, that, that I remember that. Yeah. But I was kind of young. So I'll let you guys continue. Okay. <laughs> well, now that and our co-host why did, has aged why, us, why did you invite him again? Like, why? Because well, I mean, he just aged us. He just aged ago. us. Yeah. Well, now you made us old. That's it. <laughs> the invitation's been well, rescinded. It's like a vampire thing. The phonograph. <laughs> yes. <laughs> and used to crank it. Yes. And the dog, the RCA <laughs> dog, used to stand next to it. <laughs> we used to talk about those. What do they used to call those? Um, the no, no the the speed no when. <laughs> The, they used to talk about movies that had sound. The talkies. The talkies. The talkies. Yes, yeah, yeah, I remember. Yeah, yeah. The my, talkies. Oh, that Mary Pickford. What a what a looker. 
Um, well, so for those of us who know about MTV News, thank you, uh, Lagui. Um, you know, Jonathan, Lagui, Tony, Tony, whoever who are you, you are. Are you George Santos? Are you George Santos? <laughs> Actually, you're I'm George running Santos, for office. Are you? You're. I'm, I'm his replacement. This is where he's hiding out since he's been brought up on charges. This is it's gonna be like a Scooby Doo no, no, thing. No, no. He It'll takes off the mask and he just goes to like Long Island and be like, "I'm George Santos." Like, be like, you know what? It's not the weirdest thing that's happened. No, it's not. <laughs> not the weirdest. It thing. would be the most normal thing I've done actually. Well, the one. real George Santos, please, please stand, stand up. <laughs> please stand up. I mean, Meepa was George Santos. Why can I be? It's true. It's true. You know what? Anybody, we're all George Santos. Okay, little, so back to MTV so, yeah. News. So yeah, well, I, to, to, so to your point, sorry, they still had it, but they were doing like um, it, it lived online and it lived. You know, they would do like reports and things on their on their website or on their social as as part of the official MTV News branch. So yes, I think that existed. I think that MTV and and you know we've talked about this many times on the show about MTV and you know for us that we grew up on MTV and so many did we talked about how unfortunately that is a dead brand yeah. by self infliction yeah by choice um, <laughs> because you know they will shut down MTV MTV news but they will not shut down ridiculousness they should just no. rebrand the goddamn channel now and just call it ridiculous that's TV. what it should be like yeah. ridiculous RTV TV. yeah like RTV. RTV that's it that's it done that's it. have you do you know what we're talking about ridiculousness so ridiculousness. Is, I wish I was that lucky. Ridiculousness is a show on MTV that basically they just air. It's a clip show. It, a clip of people doing crazy shit, Think ridiculous shit. America's funniest home videos, it, yeah. style. You right. know, but, but just from like the internet, really stupid things, but from online. But the thing with MTV is that they will put. I'm not kidding. They will put twenty hours back to back of ridiculousness, like. They won't play a music video, but they will play 20 hours back to back of ridiculousness. And it's sort of become a joke because nobody watches that show. So it's like, who's watching it? Like, like you want to talk about blackmail? Like, what what does he have on them that they're just playing the this show? Of ridiculousness. But, you know, but MTV, I mean, look, I think it's one of those things. The show, the channel's not relevant anymore. I think that MTV News at one point was extremely relevant with... Kurt, I mean, Kurt Loader is like yeah. was a bona fide journalist. Tabitha Soren, yeah, um, they were. I mean, they were. They were John not talking Norris, heads. They were John Norris. Yeah. I mean, these were people that had like an instrumental role when MTV was at its peak. I mean, I'll never forget being in ninth grade and watching MTV live and them breaking programming for um, Kurt Loader to tell, you know, to report that Kurt Cobain had died, right? Like, moments like that. I was uh, even thinking, like, Rock the Vote. Rock the Vote, the, the vote infamous, is one of the most like, influential. Of the most infamous, like, pop culture MTV moments when Kurt Loder was interviewing Madonna at the VMAs. Courtney and, Love. And Courtney Love starts, Courtney Love was high Courtney and Love drunk needs attention. Uh, yeah. <laughs> and that's when Madonna was, like, doing Evita, so she was very, she was very proper. Proper yes, and refined. Yes. And she was like, please take that animal off the stage. Like, it was like that vibe but you know what like that was a major pop culture moment and and MTV has lost all relevancy again it's been self-inflicted I think so the fact that MTV News is like shut off it's like oh like did anybody watch MTV News I mean I didn't know it was around and I and you are and I you, love you, MTV. you keep your finger on the pulse yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah every now and then I'll go on MTV.com or on their Instagram and be like Pero que esto? you know that they officially stopped production of the real world in 2019, it, it, I thought it was on Facebook Watch. Nope, they they originally. I mean, yeah, right? It's not on MTV. Like MTV's the real world. It's not on MTV. It's on Facebook. It'll be anywhere. It'll be anywhere. Well, but then when are they going to air ridiculousness, Darian? <laughs> yes, when are they going to air ridiculousness? That's true. That's true. Yeah, <laughs> they'll air it. You know, on like I don't know an infomercial channel. They'll air it Seriously. while you wait at the airport, but not, not on, on MTV. MTV. So. so was that something at all? Like you know, for you growing up, uh, Jonathan, Tony, George. Um, that, you know, because again, we, we, we mentioned a couple things and for me, the biggest one, I, again, I thought of was rock the vote where, you know, they really, I feel when, when we were coming of, you know, eight, 18 and, and voting age, they really took it upon themselves to mobilize that youth vote in a way that I don't know existed before then. I'm sure it did in, in pockets, but I, I just don't know. And I, and to me, that's, that would be the legacy of MTV news to me more than anything else is, is that ability of them to get that, that they, interest. They, they, and they I don't got, think that exists. They got anymore, a but, town hall with Bill Clinton, right, Ross Perot, right. And, and, and George Bush. And George Bush. Right. But like, was that something that you felt maybe the well, tail end? Was that more or less? 
Oh, uh, 92. But what I'm saying is, we, well, where I was going with it, sorry, is, you know, we were there for what I feel was like the, 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 the push, the impetus. But I, well, I my mean, mom was pushing me out at I mean, the <laughs> hospital around that time. <laughs> And it was covered on MTV News. I saw that episode. Yes. Tabitha Soren was very, very, was very appalled. Yeah. Oh, um, um, but no. So what I'm, I guess my question is, you know, I always think of it as having such an impact, but I want to understand, like, being a few years younger than us, was there that tailwind, you know, legacy that that continued? Because, again, once you hit 18, you're voting because you're voting, right? Like, it's, it's just one of your things. But I feel like up until then, if you don't have somebody kind of drilling it into you, the importance of it, it may not be relevant. It may be something that quote unquote old people do, right? Or was that something that? Well, I mean, to, so I think that one of the most important conversations that I've ever had with DJ has always been political things and whatnot. But I, I mean, when I said that I was literally being pushed out, I was, I mean, in 1992, I was two years old. So I, it really, it, that wasn't. So are we. <laughs> So I mean, for me, it was it was something that MTV, like that that kind of memory that you have, mm-hmm. uh, didn't happen for me. I mean, I definitely didn't get um, MTV. I, I remember seeing like music; it was very like music oriented, mm-hmm. but definitely didn't have that. And the people like my age, honestly, they're very like, what do you say when they're not political? Like apolitical. Mm-hmm. Like I was always very like, let's talk about politics. Let's talk about this. Like, who are you voting for? Like, research the person. Like, who you know? What do they believe in? Like, what did they vote for last year that now they're changing their mind on? You know, those are things that I I have always been curious about. But I've always hung out with people that are a little bit older than me because I appreciate that. For example, like you know, you learn from other people's experiences. Mm-hmm. But growing up, definitely like MTV for me wasn't something that was even relevant, you know, like for, really? for, for you, you're saying that it was like something that, that literally made an impact on how you vote. Oh, like my friends, I don't even think they vote. Right. You know, I also think that probably by the time that he was like in high school and that age, MTV was like on kind its way down. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, because let's see, you would have been, but it wasn't that long. If you think about it from when we were 18 to when he was 18. Right. But you it's know, one of these it, things it, it, that it's, like it's in sad. a short amount of time, it could, it, you know, a lot deteriorated. Of it has like bursts. Like I think it's like a burst and then like it like fades. Because like, for example, he would have been, you were born in 1990. So you would have been 18 in 2008. That's a year that TRL ended. And the whole so. economy. Well, in the, in the economy, but but I would, but but it's funny to say that because you, I would think that maybe like the, the pinnacle, right. Of TRL is like 2000, 2001. Like I think that's like peak. The, pinnacle, the, that's pinnacle, peak of, the TRL. pinnacle of TRL was ninety nine through like two thousand two. Right. So we're talking about less than ten years. Yeah. Right. Be- from when he became eighteen, and it just it just yeah. dropped yeah, yeah, so yeah, yeah. precipitously. Because even when TRL was at its peak, he was like a kid, so right. he wasn't necessarily thinking about you know a ten or twelve. Right. 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 Uh, right. About voting. No, like we watched how gigante. Like. Right. Right. Oh well, so do we. <laughs> Ah. So do we. So do we. I mean, you but know, Don Francisco was not rocking the vote. You know, in all in two hundred and fifty some episodes, you know, how many times we've talked about Salvador Gigante. How many times I went to Salvador Gigante? I feel like Salvador Gigante was still around. That's something you and I would do, and probably like totally like shit on and have fun. I would love it. <laughs> Did you ever go? No, I mean, I don't think so. Okay, so I went a bunch of times. Well, how, how old would you have been by the time it got canceled? No, but Salvador. I was old I, enough. I mean, I did in two thousand. I remember fifteen, sixteen. Oh, okay. okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, I would uh. The last few times I went to Salvador Gigante, I would make up my names. I remember one year I was Ajax. <laughs> like, aha. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. Yeah. You were aha. Uh-huh. <laughs> and one other time I was Bentley. <laughs> like, they Lord. gave up names. <laughs> carro con el nombre aha. Can you imagine? <laughs> Oh, yeah, that, again, that, again, that again, that again. I would always threaten my mom with that I was going to go to a chacal de la trompeta. And she'd be like, ay, por favor, qué pena. <laughs> y fuera. Y fuera. Right, let's bring Salvador Gigante back. Who do we think could host Salvador Gigante? Us. George. <laughs> that was like a plug for yourself. I mean, I think we could do it. I mean, why go any further? Oh, it's going to get top billing. I think I need to get top billing because you know that inside. No, 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 no. The solution is. It's hosted by Pedro, let me tell you. Right, but even That way we us. don't get top billing. Because you know that like my deep down dream is to MC a 15s. And do you know about this? Have you been no, advised of no this? Idea. Okay, so oh my god, I've been practicing almost this. Almost came years. true. For, almost came true. I've been practicing this for years. Like bienvenidos. <laughs> it's Mariling. It's always Mariling. Bienvenidos, señoras y señores. Hoy estamos aquí en el Pyramid Banquet Hall, aquí en Miami. Para introducir a 
I mean, I, I, para, para introducir al exilio cubano americano aquí en Miami, la bella Marilyn. Hoy Marilyn cumple 15 años. Marilyn es una muchacha típica, moderna. <risa> Ella estudia en el Southwest Miami Senior High. Le gusta hablar con, por teléfono con sus amigas. Quiere estudiar psicología en la Universidad Internacional de la Florida. Y su color favorito es el peach. <risa> How about the car? Y el carro favorito, because like, they always talk about the car that they want. It's always like a BMW. <laughs> Un BMW 3 Sierra. Ahora, por favor, señora y eh, señores, pónganse de pie y vamos a introducir la bella Marilyn. And now, you know, she comes out in a swan, you know, or in like a conch. <laughs> conch? That's a great word. <laughs> well, I've been to a 15 a where they came out of a conch. No, I know, but it's just a great word, like conch. I mean, because a, a listen, conch and a shell are not the listen, same thing. Quinceañeras from Miami in the day have nothing on aerial like nothing no they were they were under the sea <laughs> they were under the sea on land do people still do quinceañeras like that right now unfortunately no no but we're they, waiting they, for the comeback yeah they still they, things are cyclical <laughs> but they do parties they'll do a big party where they'll they will like quote unquote presentarla but not like con la corte like, for and example, all that. 15s were It's more really sweet 16. in. 15s were really in in like the late 80s, early 90s. By the time that we were 15, they weren't that in. Like we went, but they were, but they were there. They, they were, they, they were, were holding there, on. They, they were, were holding on. They were, but they weren't popular because really, when we were 15, 16, think about how many like formal, like yes, everybody had a quinceañera party at home or whatever. Right, but right, think of how right. many like quinces with choreography, la corte, and all yeah, that. Yeah, yeah. You know, pomp and circumstances they had. Yeah. Right. Very little. They weren't really in when we were 15. That's any bit, Then yeah. they sort of came back when my sweet six. On oh, MTV. that's true. My super sweet 16. And my yes, super sweet yes, on yes. MTV sort of made it again, and now they're kind of like. Mm. I think in Miami, solo se le la foto. That's what it is. What they sí. do is that they take the pictures and like we're en not going to give you 50 in Vizcaya. In Vizcaya, or, or in, la, in la entrada de Coral Gables, uh -huh. or in la entrada de Hialeah. So they take the pictures and then that's it. Like they don't do the party anymore. Yeah, no tienen la cola. La economía está mala. <laughs> la economía está mala, pero todo el mundo está en Oye, Disney. oye, <laughs> we, I mean, and and we've talked again. We've talked about this in the podcast a bunch of times. We knew people that back in the day mortgaged their house para pagarle los 15 a la chiquita. And at the end of the day, you were getting rice pilaf and cordon, chicken cordon bleu from a box. I'm not going to lie. I would totally kill for some rice yeah. pilaf and chicken cordon bleu. That's like my favorite thing in the world yeah. to eat. Pero, pero la niña tenía que tener los 15. Tenía que tener los 15. Like, it's a, it's, like a, it's a dream of mine. Why don't we have a rice pilaf and chicken cordon bleu party? Why don't we just sponsor someone's quinceañera so you can just do it? I can I mean, my, I, I just want to MC it. How I much does that cost? I'll you know what? I want to wear. I want to wear, you know wear like a really tacky rented. Espera de. I'm going to put this out there. We have listeners. <laughs> Some of our listeners have to have children. Some of those children must be 14 and a must half. be 14 and a half girls or girl identifying because that's that's broaden the scope. We will show up. All you got to pay us. Is the rice peel off and the chicken and the cordon, chicken cordon blue. blue? And we're good. That's all I ask for. Well, no, no, an open bar because I want to drink. Right. And if you're not in Florida, you got to fly us out. Yeah, well, no, yeah, if you're like, not I Florida, will do it for free. Right. And right. we'll document it on Pero Let Me Tell and You. Yes. We will make it a whole thing. Like a whole thing. So I could live my dream of emceeing a 15th. And again, I'm going to wear like a really tacky rented tux, right. you know, with like a peach cummerbund. Very you know? like dumb and dumber. No, no, I don't want it. I want it to be just like a, a one you get at a rental, you know. Place, okay, but that looks clearly, clearly rented, rented right? Right. right? With like the matching bow, the, the bow, yes, and you know the, the thing, cumberbund, the and... cumberbund. Hi, those were the good old days. Not for me. I hate. I despise having to rent those things because I. <laughs> I always tell people like my, my body's weird like I'm 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 not I'm not I'm I go to big and tall but I'm really big and short <laughs> so you know like it never fit me it was always like my mom's like do you just want to go to a good wheel and I'm like no I'd rather see. wait wait who was looking for a tux in the goodwill my mom and then <laughs> like, and okay. or Okay. Not, not the tux, it was los pantalones porque nunca me servían. Okay. Uh, te tenía que remangar. El remangar. But the thing is, my mom would always wait until the last moment until it was Saturday and the hammer wasn't were, were available. And the party was and Saturday And the party night. was on Saturday. So yeah. she's like, yo te cojo una presilla yo te lo presillo. Wow. And then like halfway through Listen, Jonathan, I don't want to hear it. I had to dance a 15s oh. balancing a hat on my head. Yeah, a top because, hat. Because, you know, it there was a top hat, you know, part of the choreography because it was New York, New York, as one does. And I remember that the choreo... I was very nervous about the top hat. And I remember I told the choreographer and I told our friend that it was our 15s. I told her, listen, 
I, you know, the hat. And she's like, oh, it's one size fits all. And I'm like, I'm not all. <laughs> like, it's not going to fit me. With him, it's one size, one size fits, fits some. <laughs> no, no, they put, now everything is like one size fits most. <laughs> yes. Well, right, he's, okay. yeah. This even, one's, even that. Right. I'm not even most. So the day of the 15s, they bring the plastic top hat. And I'm like, this doesn't. And back then, this was in high school. My hair was long. So the volume of my head was even more. I'm like, this is very Christopher Columbus. I look like I look like a pilgrim. <laughs> like, <laughs> like <laughs> and I'm like, I gotta do choreography, including salsa, with a hat that I'm balancing on my head. And I'll never forget that the choreographer was like, why don't you put a rubber band around it and like put it back? And I'm like, do you want me to look like Boy George? Like, what the hell? Like, and I and yeah, with your luck, was, you would have looked like Little Debbie. It was. <laughs> It was bad. It was bad. Like I look back on that now, and like I want to, I want to like go and hug him. <laughs> like, <laughs> but in all fairness, it's a great story. It is a great story. It's a great that story. We in now. hindsight, in hindsight, and something that we should recreate at the 15s that you're going in, to. Yes. Like, no, 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 no. Because I'm going as, as the MC. As, as the, the MC. MC. I know, but everyone else can do it. But actually, actually, it's funny because I. Speaking of 15s, I was actually talking to a friend of mine in L.A. Uh, last week or the other, well, whenever we were in L.A. And, you know, in 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 L.A., like 15s, it, it's a little bit different because um, since there's not as many Cubans, they're very big on like the, so, the Cuban social clubs and all that stuff. So he was telling me how it was some girls 15s and somebody dropped out last minute for whatever reason i forgot the reason and he had to fill in and and i'm like oh you had to fill in he's like yeah and i was older and i'm like oh how old were you he was like 33 and i was like what was he at least dancing with like in no so he like had to blend yes and he had to learn the choreography like the day before which i or like like right, right, right. before the 15th when he was telling me he was older, he's like, oh, because I was older. I, I thought, you know, 18. 20. 18. Right. right, right. right, right. And he's like, no, I was 33. And I was like, wait, what? <laughs> I was like, okay. Like, if they asked me to do a, a, a 15 to now my 40s, I would totally do it. So, and I'm like, I, I, would, I would document I would totally that shit. It. Like, Any chance to dress up and do choreography, I'm in. <laughs> I mean, I would I would do it for shits and giggles. <laughs> like, bring it on, and I got rice pilaf and chicken corn on blue. I mean, who could lose? I mean, and lose? I'm the only member of the court that can drink. Right, that's true. <laughs> <laughs> it's a win-win situation. Win-win-win. It's a win-win situation. Um, but anyway, bueno, that's a great way to end our. our yes. I think, I mean, when we're talking about being the oldest one in the court, what better way to end? No, <laughs> to I wasn't thinking up. about being the oldest one in the court. I was talking about 15 chicken oh, cord on blue. Oh, oh put, and putting it out there that we will do it. Yes. Yes. So, yes. again, listeners, yes. if you put things out in the universe, they happen. Listeners, if if you need an MC for your next Kingses, please contact us at Pero Let Me Tell You at Pero Let Me Podcast dot Gmail uh, at Gmail or DM us yes. at Pero Let Me Tell You and we will make. We'll show up. We'll, oh, no, we will. We like, will show up. This is not a, a game. Like, like legit. <laughs> like we'll, we'll incur the tux cost. <laughs> and you, but you got to provide again. And we will come open out bar to, and chicken corn blue. We will blue. come out to, you know, that's on Europa. <gasps> Yes. He has, oh. I want now. That's what I want. And the, then the the girl will dance the niña mujer. You don't dance daughters by John Mayer out of fifteens. No, no. you say you dance niña, niña mujer. mujer. If you, yeah. you do it right. And then with her brother, she dances hermanos by Pimpinela. Right, Pimpinela. Pimpinela. You know? So I mean, it's it's good times. Look, and now probably like the modern song will be probably like a Taylor Swift song or something like that. You know, the last song would definitely be something Bad Bunny ish. Like it'd be a pejreo right. as opposed to a conga. Right, 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 right. Yeah, they're not going to do, well, un danzón cubano. Like, probably that's, that's tradition. But you probably get like un danzón or un, what's the other one? Uh, or, or, un waltz. Waltz. or un waltz. You get one or the other. You're not doing Tiempo two. De waltz, uh, waltz Tiempo de waltz by Shayan. Yeah. That's the jam. He's still making those royalty money. Yeah, yeah. So anyway. Okay, bueno. Uh, let's, uh, now that, you know, all this quince talk has made us thirsty because of the salty rice The pee salty off. rice peel off. <laughs> chicken corn out blue. It's uh, time for our last soda. And Tony, um, since you are our co-host this year. Uh, this, day, this episode. This episode, <laughs> this episode. Wow. He's this episode. Our, actually, he's our third co-host he's in three weeks. Co- so. Okay, wow. You have, a, you have your work cut out for you. Um, a, what's your last soda? Who are you giving your last soda to? Your last soda of the desert. I mean, I think it's a whole country. So I think like... Oh, so they're a thirsty country. Yeah. Okay. 
ba based on like our whole conversation, Colombia, for sure, it's definitely Colombia. Like that's something I'm digging right now. It's something that I think that needs more attention, travel, you know, and I think it's just, you know, go to Colombia, go to Armenia, you know, ride a horse, go up a mountain, like feel the air. You know, that one time, I think that's what I'm going to do now. I'm going to go to Colombia, I'm going to ride a horse, go up a mountain, feel the air. Yeah. Like one time, <laughs> one time I was chatting with him on WhatsApp and like, it was a little shoddy and he, and I'm like, where are you? And he's like, I'm climbing a mountain. And then he sends me a picture of the mountain in question. And it, what is it called? The mountain? El Peñol. It was like literally this it's huge rock. 1,400 <laughs> steps. And Darian is asking me like the most serious question. And I'm going up a <laughs> hundred, you know, mind you, I, I practiced for that because, you know, I'm a little chubby. So I was like, you know, I did, I went to the gym and worked out and he's asking me all these questions. And I'm literally like, you know, going up this mountain, he's like, ha ha ha. I'm like, no, I'm really <laughs> up this like, He sent me the picture. I was like, okay, never mind. Good luck. <laughs> <laughs> I'll get back to you later. He didn't respond to me. He didn't talk to me again for like three days. Like, it's like, you go climb that mountain. Okay, well, you know, that's a first. I don't think we've ever given a lot of soda to a whole country. Yeah. Uh, but you that's know, that's true. That's Colombia is a good yeah, one. Colombia is a good Colombia's one. Colombia is a good one. You know, we love Colombia. We love los Colombianos. I mean, actually, you know what? Growing up here in Miami. I just wanted to go to Colombia. Growing up here in Miami, um, you know, we've had the pleasure of having like a lot of Colombian friends, schoolmates. Yeah. You know, it's like, you know, that's one of the things I always say about Miami that like we really are a melting pot. Yes, there's a lot of Cubans here, but there really are a lot of people from, you know, all over the place. And, you know. That's what makes us so. Unique. We don't appreciate well, it as much as You guys are just in LA, so I think that now that I'm trying to become a, I, I'm still illegal, so maybe I can invite you. But once I am, you guys should go and we're there. I can show you all the best places because I've been pretty. Pero much let me tell you, goes, goes to, to Colombia. Colombia. Oh, I love it. <laughs> I, think that's, I love it. I want footage of us on a horse <laughs> <laughs> on the mountain. Yes. <laughs> anyway, okay, so that's a good one. So. My last soda is goes to our good friend Eddie Zamora. Eddie Zamora, yum yum foodie. Um, we hung out with him while we were in LA. He was freaking amazing. You know, Eddie was one of the people we had met Eddie before, but obviously this time, like we, you know, he, <laughs> we were at his house. You know, he gave us like a grand tour of Pasadena. He took us to like this uh, really Highland cool Park place, Highland Park. Like it was amazing, but it was just so enjoyable. Um, spending time with him and hanging out with him. And like, I could really, really tell he really appreciated us that it wasn't just like, okay, let me just take care of these guys, you know, over here, holy endo. Um, and he was awesome. And so Eddie, you know, my last soda goes to you. You were absolutely wonderful. Thank you for the hospitality. Uh, we can't wait to go back. Well, we are going to go back. We are going to go back. Um, and hang out again. You were freaking awesome. Um, super like nice guy. Just buena gente. Buena gente who has lived in LA for almost 20 years, but still has a three five area code you can take the boy out of miami so, you yeah. can't take miami out of the boy so on that on that same that same you know trajectory of uh, of hospitality in los angeles i'm actually i'm gonna keep it short and sweet but i'm actually gonna give my la soda to your cousin uh alex yes. for letting us stay at his gorgeous house in los angeles i i have said this many times to you off air i want to live in his kitchen yes um, it is a gorgeous, it's, it's just a beautiful house. It's an, it's central. It has the pool. It has, I mean, multiple rooms. We just felt so at home. And honestly, I think for me specifically, it really did change the vibe of our trip because it felt like we were staying in LA Yes. And not as tourists. Well, I'm sorry you only stayed and for a short time. Next time you'll stay longer. But oh, for um, damn sure. Yeah. But um But I just wanted to give that last yes. soda to your cousin Alex. Yes. Thank you so much for, for lending us the house. I mean Alex it, it is, was is awesome. You're um, phenomenal. And and I and damn it, I didn't even get to meet him this yes, time around. Because so, you were there for like a yeah, second. And yeah. then, then we moved on. Um but anyway, yeah, that's that's what you know, as we discussed earlier, that was one of the things that I, I think, you know And also Eddie, you know, contributed yeah, to that feeling. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Um one of the reasons why uh we loved this trip so much because we were hanging out with real people who live in LA. We weren't doing the touristy stuff. We were, you know, going to the store and, you know, staying at people's houses, like little and, cafes. And, and, you know, yeah. I freaking loved Eddie's house. And, um, just like it, it, we were living the LA lifestyle. If you yeah, will. Yeah. Um, so it was, it was great. So, which anyway. is exactly what we plan to do when we go visit you in Colombia. In Colombia. Exactly. <laughs> it's immersion. Like it's like, that's it's, a perfect word. Which for is it. what you were saying is like, you feel part of it. I mean, that's why I love Colombia. Cause I feel part of it. But before, we go i will have to work out and go on the stairmaster to climb that mountain <laughs> so anyway bueno uh, tony jonathan george whoever you are um i'm an a <laughs> 
thank you for co-hosting with us. It was awesome having you. Thank you guys um, for having me. We'll have you. We'll have you again whenever, whenever you whenever want. You're down. Whenever so, you're down. So anyway, everybody, we hope you listen, laugh, and learn. And as always, remember to grab your patelito, your croqueta, and your cafecito. Thank you so much for joining us, everyone. Have a great weekend. Cuídense, mi gente. Bye. Pero Let Me Tell You is co-hosted by Darian Borges and Ismaeliano, produced by Ismaeliano, and our theme, Pero Let Me Tell You Freestyle, is composed by Michael Angelo Lomlaplex, the official gay guy. And don't forget to subscribe and leave us a review on iTunes. <laughs>